Good to go. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Tech Talk. Today we have Justin Budd here with us, the recruiter. He's going to talk about how to land your first tech job, going to cover like the difficulties of landing your first tech job, uh, how to get started, uh, your portfolio. So make sure you leave all your questions in the chat. We will definitely get to them. So thank you for being here, Justin, and take it away. All right. So congratulations, everybody, on completing your boot camp. I'm sure it was a very hard, however long it was. Um, I guess I'll start off by saying, don't be afraid to intern. Um, you know, I remember, so, uh, I used to work at a company called Apprentice Now, who used a boot camp called Was You to train people. Um, so they had partnered with, uh, companies like Infosys and HCL Technologies. And essentially uh, what they did was they would, um, and so like this boot camp trains you to do the job. These these um, programs would train people for the position. So that was a cool, uh, that was a cool program. Um, I've also seen uh, companies, they'll do um, intern, like lower paid intern things for like the first year and then they up your pay the second year. Don't be afraid to get your foot in the door is basically what I'm saying. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, these um, jobs, you know, are, are going to be six figure gigs pretty quick. But, you know, sometimes we, we, we aren't looking at the, uh, we're looking too much in, in the short term and not looking at the long term. Um, you know, so you got to get, you got to get your experience in at whatever job you can get, get your, build up your portfolio. Like she was saying, uh, that that's really, that's really where, where the, um, the nitty and gritty comes in is, is your portfolio. That's what they're going to look at. Um, nine tenths out of 10, your, your interview is going to be harder than the job itself. I, I don't know why they do it like that, but most tech companies are that way. Um, I've lost or I've had, you know, candidates fall out on job orders because they couldn't get past the interview when the job itself was something they were more than qualified to do. Um, so getting your foot in the door, that's the hardest part, getting, getting in the company. Cause you know, you gotta think you don't, you're not, if you get to a company that's paying you $40,000 a year to do a $60,000 a year job, you don't have to stay there forever. You just you just need to get you just need to get some experience in there. Make sure you're. Uh, sounds like these guys won't will make sure you get you know they're they're working with you for three months after your your graduation. So that you know that might not even have to be the case for you. But um, you know if that's where you find yourself, you know don't don't think like oh I'm worth more than forty thousand dollars a year because yeah you are. But we're just trying to get you just trying to get your foot in the door. You know work there for a year or two and get out. Now you got two years experience at XYZ company, you know. Um, what are some questions everyone has? So uh, attendees are welcome to uh, leave. Oh no, I think your mic disconnected. Don't know, yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Oh, wait, you guys can type questions back. in. Yeah, go ahead and uh, type your questions in the chat, and uh, we will definitely answer them. But Justin, kind of talk about what the uh, process is when you. Uh... Oh no! Disconnected again. Hang on. Process. What do you say? Well, we do How have it? a question in the chat. Um, it looks like, uh, what are some good portfolio inspirations? Uh, some good portfolio inspiration. Um, I have seen a lot of people, uh, what they'll do is they'll do like, uh, kind of like contract work where they'll pick up, you know, have someone will hire them for a specific coding job or like a project. So they'll do projects and they can put that into their LinkedIn or they can put that, like you said, into your portfolio. Um, 
uh, in terms of inspiration, just honestly, I mean, grind until you until you got all the all the all those projects you know just doing projects left and right i've seen so many people land jobs because yeah they might not have worked for some big company but they have you know 27 projects that they've done in the last year you know so it just it's it's just really up to you on how much you want to work but the beginning is it's kind of a grind grindy thing in the beginning to to uh um land the job later on so some inspiration work is fake until you make it, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, and then are there any reputable public platform for those entry-level internship positions? Um, LinkedIn and Indeed. You know what I mean? Like those, those are, those are the, that's as a recruiter, that's where I'm looking, you know, even uh like right now, I'm kind of looking at more senior level stuff, but here in the next few months, hopefully I'll be, um, trying to get some more uh entry level entry level positions um as a recruiter so the the company i work for they don't really provide me with companies i have to go out and find them so in order to build repertoire with these companies i have to fill their hard to fill positions first and then they'll trust me to fill more entry level stuff um, those are obviously easier for them to fill because they got their pick of the litter but uh you know i i'm one of those people who i take pride in who i'm placing so you know i'm you know connect with me on linkedin and whenever i start posting jobs like that feel free to apply but linkedin and indeed are definitely the best places to apply for entry level stuff zip recruiter too got it um and then what would you say is the average salary you should get for when getting your foot in the door like your first tech job. So for your first tech job, and you know, some people may disagree with me on this, but your first tech job, personally, like if I if I just got done with a coding thing, I would go nothing lower than thirty eight k, but about forty to forty five is where I would be looking, and that's not not necessarily me saying that's what your skills are worth your skills are worth a lot more than that that's just to make myself attractive as a candidate that's that's to make them go interesting you know we can afford that but ideally i'm going to want to move up in salary from there or i'm going to change jobs but that's going to get my foot in the door it and and that's you know that's not even like you don't have to do that i've seen people wait it out and they get more so you know i i saw a good friend of mine i this is back when i worked for apprentice now i was trying to convince them that they should take the job at 45k um and they felt they were worth more than that and they didn't have the experience for me to really help them so I, you know, I told them good luck and I kept in touch just in case they changed their mind. But I believe they landed a job at 65K, not eight months later. So some people are able to wait it out and they get that they get that higher salary. It's not it's not impossible. It's just harder. There's an easy way and there's a hard way. That's it. There's no wrong way. OK, got it. Um, and then what is the best way, or actually there's one before that, do you have any recommendations for effective networking strategies, uh, both to find like side projects and also get full-time positions? Um, I'm going to try to answer two questions at once here because LinkedIn is underutilized. So, um, going, uh, going on LinkedIn and connecting with recruiters and tech uh, people, tech talent, you're going to find people who need projects done. You're going to find people who are hiring. You're going to find people who are in that industry. So um, the best, the I'm going to say the best way to connect with recruiters on LinkedIn is to find a few recruiters and connect with them and all their connections. Um, my recommendation for networking would be to send all those people messages. Um, as a recruiter, one piece of advice. So as a recruiter, 
you know, if, if I have a specific job, thankfully with the job I have now, I have a lot of freedom to, for, um, marketing candidates. Whereas the old job, I kind of had like, you know, these are the qualifications they need to have. If they don't have that, it's an absolute no. So it was a little bit harder, but one of, uh, one of the things I really like is, is motivation. I like, I like when people message me and they're really motivated and, you know, they sound committed and they're ready to, um, you know, get out there and do what they have to do. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the wrong word to use is desperate, like not desperate, motivated is different, right? Motivated as in I'm willing to go put the work in, you know, take a chance on me. Um, one thing recruiters look for is time at a job and, um, you know, reasons why you left if you have short time at that job. Uh, we don't want to place somebody that's going to quit a month in. You know what I mean? So, like, if you have, you know, worked at multiple different jobs and have all these gaps, that's something we look at because we don't want to to um, place somebody who, you know, quit because their manager was mean to them or uh, in terms of not, nah, th there's a difference between like, you know, sacrificing your mental health. You shouldn't do that. But, you know, if some, you know, if someone's hard on you or strict with you and you quit because it was hard, that's not something I'm going to like, I'm not going to want to put, you know, my stamp of approval on your name. If, if I'm worried that you're going to do that to the next person, because then that, company that I placed you with is not going to want to hire me again. You see what I'm saying? So, so there, there's a level of, um, if you're, if you're committed and you're motivated and you're willing to, you know, try and outperform everyone there, we love that. We love hearing it. Um, side projects, just do them and record them. You know, if you do, if you do side projects, put it on your LinkedIn. You know, everything, put it on your LinkedIn because recruiters look at your LinkedIn. They look at your LinkedIn before they see anything on a resume. You know, so if I've got 100 people sending me messages on LinkedIn, um, I guarantee you I'm not going to ask every single one of them for their resume, but I will look at every single one of their LinkedIn's. So definitely put stuff on there so that, you know, they do want to reach out to you and they do want to... uh get your resume from you and move further with that process. Um, so this is going to connect to what you were just talking. So what are the best ways to connect with recruiters on LinkedIn? Uh, what do you say to them when you're cold linking them or connecting with them right away? Same thing. That's kind of why I was saying I was like answering two and one there, but um, I'll reiterate, you know, like I said, get on there, connect with recruiters. And, and there's like, Kind of like um, on Facebook, you, you've got suggested friends. You've got like suggested connections on LinkedIn. Hit up all those recruiters. Um, like I said, be motivating, be uh, persistent, be resistant. Tell them, hey, take a chance on me. Here's why I'm, I'm good. You know, I, I scored this, this, and this at my boot camp. I have done this, this, and this side project. Um, get recommendations from people you do side projects for. Hey, this person said this about me and my side project said it's the best thing they've had since this, you know, like any receipts you can provide to a recruiter is going to make you more marketable. Motivation is like step one receipts is step two, right? So motivating anyone can be motivating and anybody can fake motivation too. That's, that's the big thing. Anybody can, can like pretend to be motivated if they really want a job, but how many of you can provide receipts? Hey, this is what I did and this is how well it did. You know, like that's, that's definitely something you want to bring to the table when talking to a recruiter. Uh, this next question is connected to uh, the salary question we had earlier. Um, like what's an acceptable salary for your first tech job? And um, Noah is asking, is that the same in places with higher cost of living, those with like pre prior careers that have potentially like transferable skills? Um, what do you think about that? So, um, <clears throat> is what the same, the, the having low expectations on salary or? Or like what you is, said, it's around like 40K for your like 
that's so that's job. that's Would me that personally. Safer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so that that again that was that was a ballpark. You know what I mean? Like if you're in California, 40k, you're not gonna live off that. You know, um, it just depends. Um, you you kind of have to. So you're gonna find places that don't want to pay you more than 50k if you're just starting out. I mean, that's 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 just how it is. You know what I mean? Like I'm telling you, like right now, company there's so much going on with tech right now. It is a blowing up industry. Um, the only like positions that companies want me to help them with right now. Okay. Like right now I've got a job order for, let's see, what is, I, I can't say the company name, but, um, I will say they want someone with five to 10 years experience. Um, and they want land management software experience. Do you know how hard that is to find? I have no idea how hard that is to find. So here I am researching companies trying to find who has what, what first of all, what land management software would even look like. Then I got to find uh, companies that provide that. Then I got to hit up those companies and see if there's anyone there that even wants to make a change. Um, because the chances of me just finding someone looking for a job with land management software is so, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where people get so specific with what they want and then they top it all off. They're not even offering benefits. So my job as a recruiter is already kind of hard in that aspect. If they just want somebody fresh out of a boot camp, they've, they've got the pick of the litter. They can pick whoever they want based on whatever they want. Um, they don't need me for that. So find something that makes you stand out because there's a lot of people in tech right now. So whatever you can do to make, to highlight your experience a little bit, do it. Um, if it's learning a new language, do it. If it's doing a project for a prestigious company like Oracle, do it. Um, you know, like they're, they're, these comp some of these companies will contract out work. They'll do, hey, I need this done real quick, but I don't want to enroll you in HR benefits. Don't be like, don't be that person that's like, well, no, I want a full-time gig or nothing. Just go do it. Hey, okay. Six-month project? Yeah, I'll do that real quick. You know what I mean? At the very least, it looks good on a resume. So, so um, I kind of got off. I digress. I kind of got off a little bit on the, the topic there. But in in terms of location and cost of living, don't take a position that you can't afford to live off of, okay? But be realistic on what you can live off of because the goal is to get your foot in the door. The goal is not to get rich quick. The goal is to get your foot in the door so that you can slowly build up higher income, higher salary, more experience. And then, you know, the idea is three, five years into this, you're making six figures. Okay. And then Jeanette asking, do you have to have a LinkedIn profile to apply? I believe you do have to have a yes. LinkedIn profile. You should have a LinkedIn profile to be a wanting to like network within the developer community. LinkedIn and is professional Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Can you hear me okay? Uh, I can hear you. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Um, what's your recommendations on a like a paid LinkedIn account, Justin? So I just looked at how much they cost recently, and I mean it's like a hundred twenty something dollars a month. So it it looks like a really good investment, but I'm not paying for it, you know. <laughs> so well, it, it's up to you if you want to make that investment. I, I think what it looks like you can hit you can hit anyone's messages if you have one. So that's a big deal. So like. If I get, you know, a big commission check anytime soon, I'm probably going to do it for at least a month just so I can reach out to some of these CEOs. But um, it definitely will set you aside from from a lot of people because you'll be able to do things not many people can. But um, I can't afford it personally. But if you if you got the money, you know, do it for like a month. See it, see it, see what you can get out of it. Got it. I'm definitely not saying it's not worth the money. I'm just saying I don't have the money. So if you want, if you want to do it, go for it. I've kind of heard the same things. That's like not really necessary. I feel like uh, I've gotten fine. I've gotten by fine without it, but 
you know, if I had like a little, you know, if I had like extra money to just like throw around, you know, instead of like door dashing a bunch of food, I'm sure I'd put it towards that. So, Better spent. Um, yeah. Uh, next question. It looks like someone's got the raise hand question. Can we turn on, turn on the speakers? Rick? Yeah, I'll turn on the mic for a moment. Turn the mic. All right, I turned on the microphone and go ahead, Janae. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not hearing anything. The mics are on, so. Make sure to unmute. Hello. Here. There we go. Hi, um, I'm Alicia. So, um, I'm sorry, I, somebody had called me like during the time when you were guys just talking, it was like another business call, but okay, so what is not quite worth doing? Is it the boot camp or the academies that's not quite worth worth doing? Be No, we were talking about LinkedIn Premium. Okay, got you, okay, LinkedIn. Okay, and then like I had a few more questions. What's up? Um, so I was wondering, like, what are some creative, like, um, tech roles that you could take? Like, right now I'm in a front-end developer boot camp, and mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, it's cool, it's interesting, but I'm also interested in, like, tech sales, tech management. Like, are there any other creative tech avenues that you could take, maybe for someone who's a little bit more right-brained and or creative-minded? um business analyst and or cloud anything in, involving the cloud so um Which amazon like, web services those are all pretty good um really yeah really i mean just anything with you know analytical aspects i would go for um I'm, i've actually got a cloud a cloud it person right now that i'm marketing so i mean they're 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 pretty people want those people um, because they, like you said, right brain, they're, they're good at catching things that not many people see. Okay. Amazon Web Services is a big one, too. A lot of companies want that. Okay. Amazon Web Services. Okay. I think that pretty much answers my question. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. All right, next question in the chat. Um, so I've come across a few people saying it's worth learning and practicing data structure and algorithms to help answer interview problem questions. More so if someone is a bootcamp grad, do you find this true? Can you say that one more time? Yeah, so uh, they're saying that they've come across people saying that they should learn more data structures and algorithms to help them with the technical interviews in the tech positions. Um, and they're asking if that's true for like people within a boot camp who have graduated from a boot camp. Yes, and let me tell you why. Because in most tech interviews, they're, they, do, they do tests. They do like written tests. Um, I don't see the point of it because a lot of them are super hard. And like I was saying earlier, you know, you have a lot of people who are more than qualified for a job who can't make it through the interview because they're asking questions that they'll never deal with. It's kind of like if you applied, this is going to be, I'm super simplifying what I'm about to say. So please don't, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But it's kind of like if uh, there was a job for someone who specialized in addition in math, right? You, you, you got to, add a bunch of numbers okay and you applied for this job and at the job interview they gave you a bunch of multiplication and division questions like it doesn't make sense because you're never going to multiply or divide but you will add a lot and you should be good enough at math to add so their their way of looking at it is well we want someone really good at adding we want someone who's good enough in math that they can add at a higher level so we're going to see if they can multiply, you know, 
So it, it's, it, but it's like multiplying is a different skill than adding. So that's kind of where that is. They want, they'll ask you questions that don't really have much to do with, with the particular thing that you're applying for, but it's part of that industry. So yeah, it's good to touch up on stuff like that just so that you are able to answer those questions, but don't, you know, don't get like, you can get past some of these interviews just knowing your job. Yeah, I think it's really important to um, practice for your interviews because like Justin said, it's completely different with, than what you're actually going to do on the job. Um, and there are a bunch of books out there to help you with this. I just shared one of them in the chat. It's on Amazon. It's called Cracking um, the Coding. I think it's Cracking the Coding Interview. Um, and that will definitely yeah. be one of the books that are helpful. I don't know if Rick, do you know any other recommendations? on books like that well cracking the coding interview is really good um there's a lot of good youtube channels that kind of thing that are good for following and um using their tips and tricks and that kind of thing so definitely recommend youtube as well it's definitely like a full-time job so you got to really be invested in like learning and practicing for these to pass them because some of the questions can be really difficult absolutely Right. Okay. I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna unmute the mic again. All right, go ahead with your question. Your mic's on mute, by the way, Alicia. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you have any specific like YouTube pages that you follow that you would recommend, like? that you really love that's been beneficial to tech or um just learning it in general uh well i'm not a coder i'm a recruiter so i do follow some pages but it's like the millionaire recruiter and you know um jordan belfer and you know stuff stuff that's more salesy learn how to uh sell the companies kind of thing but mm -hmm. um i I would imagine that if there's pages out there for recruiters, then there's pages out there for IT people. Um, the Millionaire Recruiter is a good one because she is a tech recruiter. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes she'll talk about interview questions, um, like stuff she asks people in tech. So that's a good one just to get the other side of things. Right. Um, kind of get the, the recruiter's perspective and, and how you should answer questions based on that. Um, she actually has a different outlook on salary than I do, which is fine. Like I said, there's no hard or there's no there's no wrong and right way of doing things. There's a hard way and an easy way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, take what I say, and if you hear something different, take what they say and make your own conclusion. Um, you know, I'm not a millionaire, so you know, she she might have better viewpoints than me. But uh, she says uh, in one of her videos, she talks about how if she asks you what your salary expectations are, you got to shoot high because she okay. wants to know that you're motivated to to make a lot of money. Okay. Um, whereas I've seen people get shot down in interviews because they shoot too high and then people go, OK, well, you don't have the qualifications to be paid right. that amount. So we're just not going to call you back. Right. So it, it's just it kind of you might have to feel out whoever you're interviewing with on that. But mm -hmm. both both perspectives are correct, you know, because like I'm right in the sense that you might not hear again from that employer if you shoot too high. She's right in the sense that you should be motivated enough to make that amount of money. So it just depends on you and then kind of reading the situation. Right. But yeah, to answer your question, I'm sure there are YouTube channels out there. I just don't know them. Okay. Yeah, no, no, there's Thank lots. Free, free Code Camp is a really good one. Okay. And um, there's there's just people I follow with names like Aaron Jack. He's really good. Mm -hmm. And Mosh is another really good one. Okay. M M O S H. So definitely check Ooh. those out. Okay, I appreciate that. All right. Next question. So uh, Travis is asking. 
how are open source how valuable are open source projects to recruiters open source is uh contract jobs right uh, open source is more volunteer work so okay. you uh, find projects like on um github that kind of thing right 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 and then okay. you, yeah I say do them. I say do them. Uh, as a recruiter, I'm looking for experience, not how much money you've made. So, um, you know, if you've got open source jobs here and open source jobs there mixed in with some projects you're doing for a little bit of side hustle, I'm not, I don't care how much you've made based off all those projects. I'm like, what did you do for those projects? Um, so, yeah, I would do them if you can afford the time. That's that's my big thing. Don't do something that's going to put you in a financial bind to please a company that might not appreciate you for what you're worth. Um, but if you can afford to knock out some of those projects um, and you, you're able to manage your time in a way that you can make money and do that on the side, do it. Absolutely do it. Um, like I said, I'm not looking specifically for open source projects. Um, but I am looking for experience and things that you've done. So if you're not getting, you know, paid gigs enough, then yeah, knock out a few of those. Or if you got a small paid gig and you've got a lot of free time that you're willing to put into more work, do it. Got it. Um, I think that was the last question we had in the chat. Anyone else have any questions? Definitely put it in the chat or raise your hand, ask through Mike. So quick question for you, Justin. What what is it like with uh when so, when a new tech person comes to get help from a recruiter, what are kind of the steps you go through initially to get her, to get set up? Um can you uh ask that one more time? I'm sorry. When you have somebody that is new and wants to get into the tech industry, what what are the steps you go through to set them up with a recruiter? Well, me personally, since like I said, I used to work at a company that um, specialized in placing uh, new people, I would immediately send them to one of the recruiters over there. Um, I'm good friends with those guys. I know that what they're doing is is good and not. I tr you know, like I trust them. Um, even though I no longer work there, I know, like I said, I know what they're doing is is good and 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 genuine. I would send them their way. Um, I would probably let them know what the you know what it takes to do that first. And but that's kind of my go to is to if they're new, if they're brand new, like fresh out of the boot camp, I would either send them that way or you know no, that's what I would do because they take people with little to no experience people who uh, only have boot camps and that, but their starting salary is uh i think 35 to 45k a year and it depends on location so yeah yeah i think location's <laughs> a big thing i know uh the west coast here in portland obviously california um starting salaries are um a bit higher oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in Oklahoma. I could live off 35k pretty easily. There you go. But I wish yeah, we could say the same over here. here. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> we're pretty uh pretty low cost of living over here. Um. All right. Another question in the chat. So, what are your thoughts on listing languages you are learning but may not be proficient on your resume? So I saw a resume the other day um, and it said proficient in and it showed all the language they're proficient in and then it sh said familiar with and it showed all the language they were learning. So I would just separate those things and put that proficient in this, familiar in this. So that way you're, you're still showing that you, that you have other languages, um, but you're not, uh, you're not claiming to know it more than you do. 
We've got another recent question. All right, I'm unmuting the mic. Unmuting the mic. All right, Hi. go ahead with your question. So for an entry level person, like what would be like, like if they only have like maybe two years of experience or something, like what would be like um really like essential aspect or something that really stands out um to have on their resume? Like what would be like an automatic like green flag for an entry level person um to have on their resume? Um minimal gaps in employment and accomplished okay. projects okay. so you know uh if you were ideally if i'm looking for someone with two to three years experience my ideal candidate this is not this is rare to find these days so i'm not saying you have to do this i'm just saying like the perfect unicorn for me is someone who um has worked at one company for the past two years and has a lot of accomplishments within that company. So okay. instead of worked here for three months, worked here for three months, worked here for three months, unless it says contract position, that's kind of a red flag. But okay. worked here for the past two years and then within that, showing the different positions and the different duties they had within those positions, that's ideal for me. Okay. I think something else that could like help to set you apart is like how you showcase your projects. Like it's easy to just just say like this is a project I've been working on, but like going into details about everything, like being like I use this language to do this, I use this to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like going into very like specific details on everything, just not yes. learning or just not yeah. stating like I know Python. Like, well, what did you do with Python? You know, I, I can read you. I can read you. Um a uh, write-up that I made literally five minutes before this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I found someone, like I said, I was talking about the, the cloud engineer who has got six years experience at a pretty prestigious company, has all this stuff, they've got a master's. So this, is, this, this is a senior level person, so don't compare yourself to them. Uh -huh. um, but I'm just gonna read off like what I did. So, so this person had um like three pages of accomplishments okay i went through it and picked out the ones that i'm going to use to market her okay so here here's my right i'm going to send this out in a bulk email to a bunch of companies later hi my name is justin i work with gpac we are an executive search firm with over 500 recruiters nationwide I have a business analyst looking to make a change to an industry leader. <clears throat> this candidate won't be looking for long. I hope to hear from you soon as to whether or not you would like to talk with this winning candidate. Here are some of the candidates' qualifications below, right? So now I picked out mm -hmm. the accomplishments, which bullets I'm going to use to market her. So right here, we got master's in leadership and management, 10 plus years in management, providing critical support while improving customer satisfaction by 80% through improved communication and incident responsiveness. Again, this is her writing. I just copy and pasted. Wow. Um, developed and implemented documentation for routine tasks, the standardized support practices, which enhanced internal knowledge base and facilitated workload delegation. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's a lot of fancy words for developed and implemented stuff and delegated to team, right? Jira to collaborate with dev team, report bugs and issues with the portal, understanding of complex appliance data flows across mul multiple highly integrated applications, developed SOPs to improve team's efficiency and productivity, encouraging teamwork, individual growth and development, um, awareness of software integration, highlights, rank top five in MPC scores for October, November, and December of 2018. So wow. these are accomplishments that point to one, um, effective in her job, and two, management. So I'm specifically pandering to management right now because I want to get right. to the management position. So let's connect so we can discuss this candidate further, okay? So that that's what a write-up looks like for mm -hmm. a recruiter. Um, but again, I didn't have to go like get on the phone with her for an hour and a half and figure out what it is that she did. You're right. All I needed was her resume and I, you know, and I talked with her for five, ten minutes. Hey, right. what do you want out of a job? What do you want out of that? You know what I mean? And so that way all I had to do was go through there and pick it out. So if you can put on your 
resume kind of like, you know, and you want to reword it in, in a way that's super professional, obviously. But if you can find those accomplishments within each job that you do, uh-huh. that makes it 10 times easier for a recruiter to pick it out and market you that way. Right. So, um, so like a leadership class or like a business all class of that would Anything be like, like effective. That. Yeah. And then okay. it, not even just that, getting into the, like the individual achievements within that, right? Yeah. So let's do the leadership class. That alone should go on a resume. Okay. Let's say within that leadership class, you got some award that needs to go within that resume. So that's a bullet okay. right under that accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Then there place top five in testing scores, right? Whatever the case is, that needs to be a bullet too. Right. Um, like, so not just putting your accomplishment down, but like little accomplishments within those accomplishments should be there too. Mm-hmm. And like I tell people they should have two resumes. You want a one that's kind of short and sweet and one that's in depth. That way, depending on the company, sometimes they want more, sometimes they want less. Um, but you've got both just in case. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel. Um, but yeah, this this one, that's that's kind of what a write-up looks like for for a recruiter. It's just a generic one for someone I'm working with right now. Okay, and one more um, question. Okay, so what about a um, a target and or promotions course? Would that kind of be effective? All of it. Okay. A- that Everything that you can do is should go on your resume. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, any other questions? Feel free to leave them in the chat. Also, Justin, is your LinkedIn a good place for people to contact you if they have more questions? I know sometimes absolutely, I kind of forget yeah. my questions, like yeah, while no, it's absolutely. happening and then I remember afterwards. Yeah, I can share that in here. Feel free to connect with me oh, and ask me any questions. If I got time, I'll for sure answer them. I'm mostly just making phone calls all day anyway. Um, and then also we are recording this tech talk by the way and you can definitely find it on our youtube channel later today or tomorrow you can watch back this recording here is our tech talk playlist and then if you're interested in joining next week's tech talk we have um, someone coming in talking about tech debt and here is a link where you can check that out if there are no other questions, um, this is pretty much the end of the talk. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you so much, Justin, for sharing your tips and tricks on how to land a first tech job. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining and have a good weekend. Absolutely. Have a good one.